In this video, we'll talk about the basics of continuous random variables. We'll talk about probability density functions, cumulative distribution functions, and how we go from discrete to continuous variables. So why do we need continuous random variables? So suppose we wanted a random number that was equally likely to be any number in this interval 0 to 10. What is the probability that x is exactly equal to this number? Well, it's actually 0, because there's uncountably many numbers in this interval. Um, what about the probability that x is between 5 and 8? Well, that would just be like 3 tenths, right? It would be like the size of this interval over the total. And then, what's the set of possible heights and feet a person can have? Let's say um, everyone is between 1 and 8 feet tall. Then uh, the probability that someone has a height of exactly this many feet is actually 0, again, because there's infinitely many heights. And the probability that someone has a height between 5 and 6 feet, though, is non-zero, because it's an interval. So here's the intuition. Um, so this is a probability density function, or PDF, and it looks something like this. So the first thing is that it's non-negative, just like a probability mass function is always non-negative. Then the integral, like so the area under the entire curve is equal to 1, just like the sum of all the probabilities in a discrete random variable are equal to 1. The probability that x lies in an interval a to b is simply the integral from a to b of the density function, so it's the area between a and b. The probability that x is exactly equal to y is the same as the probability that x is between y and y, which is actually just 0 because it's the integral on a single point. And the probability that x is approximately q is approximately this, uh, let's say, the, the probability that x is between q minus epsilon over 2 and q plus epsilon over 2, and you can see the picture. Um, so if epsilon is small, then you can use a good like rectangle approximation, a Riemann rectangle. And so the area of this rectangle is epsilon times the density function, because this is the height is this uh, density function evaluated at q, and for epsilon very small, this is pretty accurate. So it's about epsilon times the density function. And most importantly, uh, the density function tells us ratios of probability. So the probability that x is close to u versus close to v is about 2 because this one is twice as high as this one. And so it becomes epsilon times the density at u over epsilon times the density at v. And so the epsilons cancel out, and so the densities keep relative uh, probabilities of being near a point. So here's all the properties of a probability density function, and they're for continuous random variables, one that take on uncountably many values. Okay, so now let's talk about a CDF, or cumulative distribution function. So here is the density function uh, of a uniform random variable. It's the same, like flat at 1, uh, from 0 to 1, and you know this is valid because the area of this under this curve is uh, the area of the rectangle, which is 1 times 1, which is 1. Um, so the, we've defined the CDF of x to be f, capital F sub x of w, which is the probability that x is less than or equal to w. So it's the area all the way uh, to the left of w. So there's three parts here. So if w is less than 0, so if you have a point here, the probability that x is less than this point, like negative 1, is 0 because x is always between 0 and 1. There's no area to the left of uh, negative 1. If w is greater than 1, so if you have a point here, like 2, the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 is 1 because it contains, because all the area is already to the left of this point. So because x is always between 0 and 1, so the probability is less than 2 is 1. Now finally, for any w between um, 0 and 1, the probability that you're less than w is the area all the way up to w, and the area is uh, w times 1. That's the area of a rectangle. And so the CDF uh, looks like this. This is the cumulative uh, probability of being less than w. So here are some properties. So the CDF at t is the probability x is less than t, so it's the integral from negative infinity to t of the density function. By the fundamental theorem of calculus, if you have a function that's defined to be the integral up to a point of a function, it means that the derivative of the CDF is actually the PDF. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, the probability that x is between a and b is the probability it's less than b minus the probability it's less than a. So it's whatever is left in between. Um, fx is always monotone increasing because we're integrating a non-negative function. So for any c less than d, um, the probability x is less than c is less than the probability x is less than d. And also, uh, as v goes to negative infinity, the CDF at v is the probability x is negative, less than negative infinity, which is 0. So the left-hand limit is 0. Uh, here, the right-hand limit is always 1. The probability it's less than infinity is always 1. So this is a property of any CDF. So here uh, are the two most important that describe the relationship, that one is the derivative of the other and the integral of the other. So how do we go from discrete to continuous? Uh, you can look at this chart yourself. But importantly, like the sum of the P PMFs is 1, or the integral of the PDF is 1. And if you want the expected value of g of x, this is lotus. Uh, you would look sum over all x of the uh, value times the PMF. And for continuous, you just switch to an integral and times the density dx.